Hey everybody, Alex Brooks here with my last video of 2024. And in this video, I'm happy to announce that I've completed a 12 week online cloud engineering academy course that was created and instructed by Suleiman Shahir. And what you're gonna see today is my personal project that I believe kind of encapsulates everything that I learned in the academy. So I know that your time is valuable, so let's dive right into it. Okay, just a quick disclaimer before we continue. This video is a personal project demonstrating my cloud engineering skills and knowledge. While I have completed a 12 week cloud engineering course, this video does not include or reproduce any proprietary material, content, or intellectual property from that course. The project showcased here is entirely my own work and is intended for educational and demonstration purposes only. All right, so the first thing that I wanna discuss with you guys is the overall architecture. And we'll get into the infrastructure as code, which is the bread and butter of the project. But right now I wanna go through the logical flow of the application. This is a very simple helicopter tracking app. There are tiles that are rendered in either an arrived column or a departed column. And each tile is associated with a specific helicopter registration number or N number. And the user can simply click one of these tiles to move it from one column to the other either arrived or departed. So what's great about this application is that it can be used at helicopter dispatch centers to keep track of what helicopters have departed and what helicopters have arrived. All right, so I wanna go over the architecture of the application first, and then we'll kind of go into the infrastructure as code. So you can see that the UI is here and I'm using a subdomain of my portfolio website. That's using Route 53 and CloudFront right here. So you'll notice I have two instances and two databases deployed in private subnets. Now this allows our application to stay highly available and fault tolerant. I also have a Bastion host here in a public subnet to allow me to SSH into the RDS and the instances if I need to make any configuration changes. So just a side note, I spent about two full days trying to figure out how to enable inbound and outbound internet traffic um, through the Bastion host for my instances. And I'll tell you, it kicked my butt. I'm sure I'm overlooking something and I'll look into it further, but uh, my quick, fast solution to get this project deployed was to just simply deploy a temporary NAT gateway, which worked for me. All right, so let's talk about how I actually secured this project. The first thing that you'll notice, the traffic is filtered through AWS WAF. I love using WAF because it comes with some easy default configurations, especially if this is just a very simple application. Once that traffic is filtered through WAF, it then goes to my application load balancer. So once the traffic is routed to this application load balancer here, it is then routed to the appropriate instances. Now, the security groups of these instances only allow the inbound traffic from the application load balancer here, and it allows outbound traffic to the RDS and the NAT gateway. Now, the database security groups only allow inbound traffic from the appropriate security groups in their private subnet. So based on this architecture, you can see just how locked down the traffic flow of the application is, not to mention all of the IAM roles and policies that were created. So for example, I had to create a specific policy to allow the EC2 instance role to actually run SSM commands from my CI CD pipeline. And without this specific policy, the pipeline would actually fail. All right, so talking about continuous integration and continuous deployment, let's talk about how I efficiently made and deployed those changes to my website. So I'm using GitHub here for my version control. Anytime that I would push changes to the front end here or the RDS, those changes would actually be made with GitHub Actions as my CI CD pipeline. So anytime I'm pushing changes to the back end, however, I'm actually using code pipeline and code build. So what code pipeline does is it detects the changes in the repository and then executes my code build commands. So code build actually packages the backend files from the repository and then copies them into the instance, unzips those files, and then runs a series of SSM commands, basically updating the application. All right, so I'm using Terraform to deploy my infrastructure as code. 
And I'll tell you initially, I was not prepared for how much code is actually required for such a simple application. But I was prepared because of the instructions by Suleiman in the Cloud Engineering Academy, uh, specifically to organize my folders and my modules and create a main output and variable uh, .tf in each of those modules. So I started with the network module, which is the backbone of the entire project, right? It holds the VPC, the public subnets, the private subnets, and the security groups. Now you can see just how much code is here in the network module alone. And this is where I define the VPC, the public and the private subnets, the route tables, the route table associations, and then the security groups for the instances and the databases. So next I created the databases, the main and the backup database, and I'm actually using AWS Secrets Manager to manage the login credentials for those RDSs. So here is a very basic module. This is where I defined the Bastion host and the app server main and app server backup with the Elastic Load Balancer, the listener, and then the target groups. Then it was time to move on to the front end where I defined the front end bucket along with the logging bucket for errors and debugging and also the CloudFront distribution. So uh, this was a pretty hefty module for me for sure because <laughs> there was a lot of things that I had to learn about the distribution as far as caching behavior, the, um, the origin control, the access control, the traffic flow, the headers, all of that good stuff I had to learn and then implement here. All right, moving on over to the pipeline now. This is where I am defining the code build project and the code pipeline. So this was a pretty simple one. I just had to look up the commands that I would send to the EC2 instances uh, using SSM. That was just a little bit difficult uh, to get the syntax proper, but once I got it, it worked beautifully. But you can see that this is where I'm defining the backend build and then the code pipeline itself. I'm using GitHub as the source and I had to create my own uh, GitHub source connection and then use that connection ARN here. And you'll see that I also have the code pipeline bucket, right? So that's where those files are being pulled from the repository, zipped as an artifact, put into the pipeline bucket. And then we're basically taking that artifact out of that bucket, copying it to the instance that uh, zip file basically gets unzipped and then installed on the instance, as I said before. So I ended up doing the security module last um, just because of a little bit of a trial and error on my part where I would basically deploy a module and then it wouldn't work because it didn't have the proper role or policy attached. And then I would have to go in and create the role, create the policy and then attach it. So it was just easier for me to deploy everything and then kind of work through the errors and the bugs and then just create those appropriate policies and IAM rules and then attach them later. So that's what I'm doing here. You can see that there's quite a bit of uh, code here to go through. So we'll go, won't go through all of that, but that's basically my security module, basically IAM rules and policies. So to tie it all together, the main TF is where I am basically calling these modules. So let me close up some of these folders here so you can kind of get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So this is main TF. This is where I'm basically calling the modules, compute, uh, network, front end, storage, security, and pipeline. Now I would say the hardest part about Terraform for me specifically was learning how these variables are passed to one another. So I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. The database security group needs to allow traffic inbound from the main app security group or the backup app security group. So as you can see here, I am uh, passing main app security group from the module network main app security group to the storage module. So what that means is in module network dot main app security group, if I go to that module and go to the outputs, I had to put main app security group, right? So I defined that security group in main.tf. I'm putting it as an output. That way, the uh, main.tf of the root, the root project can actually capture that variable and then send it somewhere else, specifically in our case, the storage module, right? 
Now we go to the storage module and we had to define those variables main app security group as well. So there was a lot of connecting the dots that I had to do to figure out, oh, this variable is used here. I need to pass it this way, right? And so that is how we use the variables between the modules. All right, so just before I let you go, I'm gonna show you how this application works in the back end. When the page is first loaded, the script.js renders these tiles from the database. So let's look at that code. Go script.js here in my front end folder, and we can see that the API URL is tracker.rotordev.com, but it's actually forwarded to the Elastic Load Balancer via CloudFront. So the first thing that happens is this fetch tile, which calls the API endpoint tiles. We go to the app.py, which again is hosted in the EC2 instance as a Flask app. We can see that the endpoint tiles connects to the database, fetches the tile states, packages it as a JSON payload, serves it back to the front end for that rendering. Now what the front end does with those tiles is renders the tiles and then adds this listener event click. So when the tiles actually clicked, we execute the moved tiles endpoint. So the moved tiles endpoint in the app.py, py, excuse me, is basically here. We're connecting to the, the database, capturing that tile ID of the tile that was actually clicked and then we have this nice little uh, statement here. We're looking at the current status of the tile and we're gonna set a new status as departed. If that current status of the tile equals arrived, else if it's already arrived, just leave it arrived. And that's basically it. It's a very simple application. And like I said, what's great about this is I could introduce some sort of tracking API and dynamically move the tiles. And that's it. That wraps up my project for 2024. And I had such a great time getting to know every one of you in the Cloud Engineering Academy. A special thank you to Suleiman and all of the other people that have showed me love and support through this entire process and journey. Know that you're appreciated and I value all of the feedback. You guys have kept me motivated through this entire process and I cannot wait to see what we do in 2025.